hundreds from all over the Greece of that war for that room. If they could fix slaves, they would fix anybody. But said I learned later that the technology used for slaves, deep brain stimulation or DPS, is actually about the suppression of symptoms rather than the curing of disease. So that's an important view. In short, the remote control, which is other hand it over to later at a later point. The remote control uh, uh, governs the strength and the frequency of the electrical impulses uh, that are sent from the pacemaker to the probes in the head. From there, the probes emit that current in a, into a particular area of the brain. And in that particular area, uh, uh, they, uh, they counteract the neuronal signals that are otherwise causing the, the tremor in uh, these legs. So what you get is um, the uh, electrical current from the pacemaker ultimately cancels out the tremor. Now, medically, this is, it is not understood why it works, but it works. Now, in the coming days, Lane's improvement came out of the trade off. Well, while his movements were articulated, his speech was lesser. Uh, it was increasingly hard to follow his brief comments during the lunch break and during lunch conversations. A fellow patient, well versed in the literature on the deep brain stimulation, informed me that this was normal, that the remote control could actually be used to temporarily turn off. Uh, the electrical pulses, thereby improving the speech, but obviously at the price of uh, the tremor returning. We have some kind of a trade-off here, which in simple form looks like this. You have a motoric function that is controlled over your leg, and you have a linguistic function here. Um, which is allowing yourself to articulate yourself in a way that makes other people understand you. I draw the tool and down the the relation of something to the body. Pretty clear cut trade off if Lane is interested to move in an articulated fashion to control the tremor. Uh, he should choose uh, to actually maximize the, the current and if he wants to talk to people, to be understood, to communicate with language, to express himself, he should actually accept that there be a certain tremor and uh, that he activates the system. Now, I returned home. I happened to read an article in The Guardian which reported on military researchers and experiments with neuroscience to augment the performance of one's own soldiers. You can see that I'm starting my talk only now. Um, so, The Guardian reported on uh, another report by the Royal Society and the Scientific Society. Um, that had a larger study partial reports making a formal one of these partial reports was actually relating how militaries wish to improve the performance of their own soldiers by uh, using neuroscience or to degrade the performance of enemy soldiers also by neuroscience. And here was a richness of uh, methodologies that were considered. Um, I was really taken aback by the examples given. I'm just picking out two here. Uh, weak currents induced into the brain um, uh, in sort of as to improve a person's ability to detect uh, uh, IED, that is, wayside bombs type that are used in Afghanistan. So you can actually get an improvement of the detection rate of such objects, of such dangerous objects, if you're stimulating the brain in a particular manner based on uh, neuroscientific knowledge. Secondly, um, there was also considered a full integration of the human brain into a weapon system. And I'll get back uh, to the rationale of doing that. Now, in that, I recognize the same class of neuroscience that was being used uh, uh, on lane, and from which he had benefited so much. It surprised me that I had not even 
thought about numerous applications for this type of empirical knowledge back at the hospital. Experience personally a complete reversal of the enthusiasm triggered by the inspiration from the simulator. His enchantment was but the problem of dual use, a technology restituting life is potentially more to the price of the technology delivering another trade off. Now, let me move on to the question what are neural weapons? They're part of the title of my talk today, and I should bring you a bit closer to our understanding what I understand when using the term neural weapons. But let's start with armament development, because what I'm talking about is not real in the sense that you already have these weapon systems deployed, but it's real in the sense that you have a class of defense uh, 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 engineers developing these weapons, not only since yesterday or this year or the year before, but actually since one or two decades ago. Uh, and there comes from resources uh, allocated to such development. So armament development at large means supposing fantasy from the form or conflict state in the future. In following armament development, with our own thinking, we may understand current beliefs on what it means to be human in the future. Now, the general 